So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the Samsung Galaxy S21 Plus one year later. So when it comes to the price point of this phone right now, it can be found around $799. Even if you know where to look, you can get it at under $700. And if you find it on eBay, it'll probably be cheaper than that used. So this is actually close to the price of the Galaxy S21 FE 5G, which just launched. And there are some benefits to this over that phone, like a larger display, for example. And then when the Galaxy S22 Plus comes out next month, this should be even less. And this is a premium Samsung phone. It feels actually quite similar to the Gal Galaxy S21 Ultra without having the huge camera bump. So one year later, when it comes to the body and the build, what really struck me about this one is the overall flat feel to it. You know, Samsung usually does curvy displays, folding, flipping things. This one, just a standard slab, 6.7 inches, so it does have a nice large screen and just flat. So no accidental, you know, presses on the curves because there is no curves, but it still retains the curve features that, you know, usually give you the edge panel. So you have a flat display, but you still get the edge panels on here. And because it's a big phone, you still get a big battery. But I just enjoy the polished, you know, phantom black here. It looks, it feels about as premium as the Galaxy S21 Ultra. It really does for much less money than the S21 Ultra. What you're really paying for with the Ultra is the camera. And maybe a little bit more sharpness with the resolution on the display. But I gotta say, when I pick this up after that phone, it just feels like a slightly toned down version of it. And we do have Gorilla Glass Victus on the front and the back of this phone and just like the S21 Ultra, very clean around the camera housing. A year later, I still feel like this feels like a premium device. I don't feel like it feels quite as premium as you know the Galaxy S21 Ultra, maybe even the Note feels a little more premium, but this is still up there. So for the lower price points you could find this at now, you're not gonna feel like you're getting anything cheap, anything like that. This actually feels way more premium than even the Galaxy S21. FE. Now, when it comes to the display, one year later, it's still a gorgeous panel right here. The colors are very rich. You do have the punch hole up here, so we don't have any notch on this phone, anything really protruding. Bezels are quite thin for this device as well. Sharpness, again, could be a little bit better for the price that it initially launched at. You know, it doesn't have a 2K like the S20 Plus had, but still the display, very bright. It can hit up to like this crazy amount of brightness, 1300 nits peak. It was so easy to read in sunlight, it was ridiculous. I really enjoyed that. In addition, if we go to display settings here, we do have the ability to change it between the adaptive and the standard modes. But I also like how you can tweak the actual white balance of the display right here in settings. Not only that, in Android 12 and 4.0 One UI, they did bring the extra dim mode. So if I go over here, you'll see it right here. And that little N signifies a new feature. So extra dim on the Galaxy S21 Plus allowed it to get super dim at night so it didn't really bother your eyes. This is a great display panel right now and I don't think when you if you get this phone right now even one year later you're going to even be at all disappointed. They're still going to be using the same type of tech in the upcoming S22 Plus. So you can might as well just get this one if you're trying to save a buck. You're going to get pretty much the same panel and it's quite smooth. I didn't notice any delay in speed and for this discounted price 6.7 inches at this price i mean an iphone at this price is going to run you around a 6.1 inch display you get a 6.7 here much bigger and you do get a smooth display a smoother display than the 6.1 inch iphone at this price it's a great deal i really think it's a good value for what you're getting with the display panel. And not only that, you do get the always on display right there. I have it on tap to show. And you also have the in display finger, which worked really well, the in display fingerprint sensor. It is a ultrasonic variety, so that's a good thing for this phone. That's better than what you'll find on the FE, which is an optical. So if we go like that, it'll just unlock a little bit more flawlessly every time. Now, the platform on here did start out with Android 11, but now it's on Android 12 here, so it is a little bit better. We have quite a few new features on board here. And in addition to that, I will say that the Samsung has been pushing out a lot of great updates here for this phone very quickly. So you don't really have to worry too much about not receiving a software update. You will be getting your software updates quite regularly here, at least once per month on this Samsung phone, and that's really good. With the software, you do get a lot of the same advanced features you'll find on the Galaxy S21 Ultra. 
sans the S Pen. So no S Pen. That's a little disappointing considering the size of this phone. Maybe they should make it kind of universal across these bigger phones, but who knows? Maybe they'll just keep it for the flagship grade, the top of the line. I got to say, I'm very happy with its overall software. You know, you still get all your nice split screen modes. You can still do all that, you know, edge panel stuff, all the pop view things you want to do. In addition to that, you do have a lot of decks feature going on up here. You can use it with a wire. You can use it wirelessly. You can use it with a computer. It really depends on how you want to use it. You could turn this phone into a computer. The software is sweet. And a year later, it just feels like I'm using, you know, Samsung got an ecosystem. They all kind of work the same. So I don't feel like I'm downgrading at all if I use this when I'm not using the Galaxy S21 Ultra. It's a very good software experience. And so 2021, we've seen the invention of the Snapdragon 888, which made its way to this phone. This is one of the earliest phones with this processor. Man, I got to say, last year was like the year when phones became so fast that it's like you don't even have to think about speed anymore. I mean, they've been fast before that, but they're even better right now. And if you're wondering why my Play Store is not signed in right now, I was doing some security updates for this phone. I like to sign out of my account sometimes when I'm doing security updates. But this one right here, very quick when it comes to performance, super fast indeed. And like every time, you know, I use this and I use this, I feel like I'm using the same phone, even though it has eight gigs of RAM. This one has 12 gigabytes of RAM. It didn't seem to slow the performance down at all. It's a very solid performer day to day on the Galaxy S21 Plus. So no issues here. And even in the long term, it doesn't really slow down. If you're thinking, oh yeah, test that Samsung two years later. You know what I'm saying? No, bro. It doesn't slow down. It's still fast a whole year later. It's going to be fast next year, too. So if you want to see an update next year, I'll compare it to your favorite iPhone. It's going to be fast next year, too. So let me know. Come at me. Well, well, come at me with a comment down below. Let me know what speed test you'd like to see, and you'll see how this thing performs even next year. Now, one area that was a little disappointing is Samsung removed my SD card slot. I don't like this because I like to swap the SD cards between different phones and with this one you know while it did give me 128 gigabyte base that's pretty solid you know 256 gig this phone kind of maxed out around there we didn't have any 512 gig for this we didn't have any one terabyte nothing like that no sd card expansion so i could see how this could just be a total skip for people who plan to keep their phone long term they want something like 512 gigs one terabyte or at least a samsung phone with an sd card so this is a little disappointing for me but if you're not super heavy on the files, you don't use too much storage or you kind of transfer stuff around, this will be just fine. So when it comes to the cameras here, these were also very nice. We have a 12 megapixel standard, 64 megapixel telephoto, 12 megapixel ultra wide. In addition to that, we do have a 10 megapixel 4K 60 on the front, which actually looks quite similar to the S10 Plus series, S20 series, things like that. Not too much different on the front, but still a little bit improved. On the rear though, 3X optical, you can go the ultra wide, which was nice. You can go up to 30X, which is a ridiculous amount of zoom. It starts getting a little grainy at that level. However, you still have the ability to zoom very far. If you go up here, you can change your aspect ratios. You can even toggle this into the 64 megapixel if you want that super sharp result. In video mode, the ability to still do 8K on here makes it pretty much a value because you don't have to go to their highest end to get the 8K. You can just go to the Galaxy S21 Plus and get the 8K video. So if you want that super high-end video, you could do it right here on your Galaxy S21 Plus. However, this 8K video is gonna look a little bit shaky if you move the camera too much. It doesn't have a lot of stabilization action going on. I gotta say though, I'm very impressed with the feature set on here, and for the money, you're getting a super high-end camera setup on here. Now, some people argue the results don't look that great. I'm pretty happy with the results. I think it does a fantastic job in most scenarios for what this is. It's a smartphone. It's giving you great smartphone photography and videography. Battery life was good on this phone too. Mostly Samsung goes with a 1080p. You can't tweak it. It gives you better battery life right out the gate. You also have power saving modes on here, which really did help out quite a bit. You can enhance the processing speed to however you want it. So you can kind of tweak it, get the better battery settings. I found this one easily, I mean easily make it through a decently heavy day of usage here. And then on top of that, you do have fast charging and fast wireless charging. So the phone actually charged quite quick as well through its universal USB-C port. Audio was strong as well out these speakers, especially if you did have Dolby Atmos enabled. This is a must if you want to get the better audio on this phone. A year later, I find it to be just as good as most other high-end phones, maybe slightly louder or lower than some, 
but still very respectable nonetheless. And then the phone call quality, the signal strength was fantastic. No issues here, 5G was strong, phone calls were great, messages went through, everything was just snappy, fast, how you would expect. So Samsung's been nailing it here with the S21 Plus when it comes to that area. Bluetooth 5.0 on board, so not the 5.2 found in the S21 Ultra. However, I mean, for the prices you could find these at, $599 or so, this is a better deal than the S21 FE, in my opinion. If you guys want to see a comparison between that one and this one, let me know down below. But one year later, I'm supremely happy with this phone. I think there are some sacrifices, like you were paying quite a bit when it first came out to sacrifice on too many areas over something like an S21 Ultra. But now that the prices have depreciated a little bit, the S21 Plus is an excellent deal right now. It's actually better than a lot of phones because of what you're getting in terms of the size of the display. You're getting 8K video. You're getting a large 4,800 milliamp hour battery. This is an excellent value of a phone right now. And it's a sleeper device, I think, in the market. It's a device that doesn't get a lot of attention, a device that not a lot of people like to talk about because it's just not the Ultra. It's not the Max. It's just a Plus these days. But this phone right here, don't sleep on it. This is an excellent value and better than a lot of phones you can find in this $599 to like $700 range. Let me know your thoughts on it down below in the comment section of this video. If you found it helpful, entertaining, and informing, click the like button for me. Subscribe for more. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.